Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. The latest updates to both versions of Logic Pro, that is Logic Pro for Mac 11.1 and Logic Pro for iPad 2.1 have just dropped in the app stores. And what the set of updates brings to the table is, well, number one, some long time user requested features have finally made an appearance. I'm sure this alone is gonna be the reason you'll want to update. Number two, a brand new audio effect. And number three, new sound packs, producer packs, lessons, and other cool features that I'm sure you're gonna be into. Now, if you're seeing what's going on right now on screen in the mixer, you're probably shouting, Chris, what kind of sorcery is this? Because every Logic Pro user knows that you can't rearrange the channel strips in the mixer. Well, my friend, today with the latest versions of Logic Pro 11.1 for Mac and 2.1 for iPad, you finally can rearrange the mixer to your heart's content. Rearranging the channel strips in the Logic Pro mixer in both versions is as simple as you'd hope it to be. All you have to do is click and hold for like half a second till the channel strip seems to bevel forward from the rest of the mixer, and then you just drag it to wherever you want it to land in the mixer. And as you can see up in the tracks area, the track follows along. So once again, if I do the same with the piano here, click and hold, and I can rearrange this right after the drums. You can do the same with a selection of channel strips, whether you hold shift or command. So for example, I'll select the 808 here and hold shift and click on the arpeggiated synth. If I click and hold and I can move the selection. Plus you can select and move channel strips that are not directly next to one another. So hold command, click on the vocals, the synth bass and the piano, click and hold and drag them and booyah. Looking at the tracks area, everything follows suit. And not only that, you can also move auxiliary channel strips. So for example, we have this curious channel strip called the QRS room. If I click and hold, if I drag it right after the piano, and in the tracks area, a track is created for this auxiliary channel strip. So it seems to be clear that a track has to follow a channel strip when it moves, just like in previous versions of Logic Pro, but this is fantastic. This saves so much time, so much effort, and you can arrange your mixer exactly the way that you want it. In Logic Pro for iPad 2.1, you do exactly the same. You click and hold with a finger to move channel strips in the mixer. The second new feature that's probably gonna put this whole thing over the top for you, and you'll definitely wanna update, is that in Logic Pro for Mac 11.1, you can finally, finally search for plugins, instruments, MIDI effects, and more using a text-based search. Whether it's an empty slot or an occupied slot, when you click, there's a search field at the top, it's ready to go, and you can immediately type in the effect that you're thinking of. So perhaps I wanna bring in the Ensemble plugin in Logic Pro. Just by typing in a couple of letters, boom, there it is. So I can press down, and then I can press return to load the plugin. If I click on the Ensemble slot, I can type in Waves. And look, there are my three Waves plugins. So I can bring in perhaps a VU meter, and the VU meter replaces the Ensemble. The same can be applied to instruments. So if I click, I could search for perhaps Alchemy instead of Sampler. So I have my choice between Sample Alchemy or Alchemy. And just like that, I've loaded a new instrument, a new plugin without having to dive through menu after sub menu. And again, this could be applied to MIDI effects. So if we click, clearly I don't have anything beyond the Logic Pro MIDI effects options, but nonetheless, I'll type in ARP for arpeggiator. There it is. On top of this, you can assign inputs and outputs and send assignments using the exact same search field. So in this case, I have inputs three and four on my audio interface. Or if I go to the outputs here, I can type in the various outputs in my audio interface or a bus assignment. So for example, I could type in maybe bus two because I wanna route this to a new bus. And just like that, I've routed my vocal through to bus two so I can apply further processing. And the same can be applied to send assignments. So I could type in bus one and look at that. Just typed in bus and there's the first one. But of course, if I wanted to choose perhaps bus 101, I can choose bus 101. But also, if we open the sidechain assigned compressor, as noted by the arrow here, you can also search by text in the sidechain field of a plugin, which is gonna be a huge workflow enhancement. So if I just type in perhaps synth, look at that, my synth bass or arpeggiated synth, and I can reassign as needed if I press return. All right, so I'll set it back to the kick. All right, so at this point, there's some plugins, arpeggiators, stuff I've decided I don't really need anymore. 
So to get rid of these plugins in one click, all you have to do is hover your mouse over the plugin, the instrument, the MIDI effect, and hold command. The mouse cursor will turn into an eraser, and with a single click, I've removed that VU meter, the arpeggiator, even an instrument, but I'll undo. Plus send assignments. Look at that, no more menu diving. It's natively built into Logic Pro. Plus for audio effects, there's a new key command. By holding Control, Command, and P, brings up a search audio effect plugin menu. So I could type in the adaptive limiter. And this plugin will be loaded when I hit return to the selected channel strip, in this case, the QRS room. Oh yeah. In Logic Pro for iPad 2.1, you can easily reorder plugins in the plugin area just by clicking, holding, and dragging on a plugin. You can also reorder or delete multiple tiles using the edit mode. Of course, the ability to move channel strips around in the mixer, the ability to load plugins just by typing in the title and hitting return is monumental enough for us Logic Pro users. But Apple has also delivered a coveted, meticulously emulated brand new audio effect plugin, which can be found in the reverb folder. So for this guitar track, I'm gonna go right down to reverb and Apple has recreated the Quantec Room Simulator. In fact, in two versions, the Quantec QRS and the Quantec Yardstick. Released in 1982 by the German inventor Wolfgang Wolf Buchleitner, Quantec Room Simulator is a digital reverb effect, but it diverged from traditional reverb effects that were based on the echoes and reverberations of a space. Instead, the Quantex emulated the natural resonances of a space. This delivered rich, uncolored reverb tales that had previously been unattainable. So the Quantex quickly became revered for their ability to produce convincing, immersive soundscapes, making their way into studios, movie productions, broadcasts, and sound design facilities worldwide. Acquired by Apple, the QRS and Yardstick have transitioned from rare and coveted hardware to an accessible plugin available to all Logic Pro users at no additional cost. And Apple have accurately recreated the sound of these units using the original schematics, algorithms, and code. So let's take a listen to the Quantex right now on this guitar track. Obviously, the largest control is the reverb time, which can be found all the way to the left, which can be complemented using the room size control. So I'm gonna reduce the dry level of this guitar, and I'll reduce the room size. I'll hit play and start bringing up the reverb time and room size so you can really get a sense of what's going on when using the QRS. Here we go. So it's not just a shimmer reverb, there's actually plenty of presets to get really realistic sounding small rooms, medium rooms, large rooms, and there's even some classic presets for each unit. Of course, there are delay and level controls for the first reflection, plus a pre-delay control. If we set this back, take a listen as I delay the reverb. In the center is something called the reverb time multiplier, which is basically you can emphasize or de-emphasize either the low end or the high end of the reverb. So if I dial this back, take a listen again. To the left of that is a freeze button, which allows you to basically select a certain moment of the reverb and have it recirculate again and again and again. It's frozen in time. So let's take a listen to just the wet control here. Plus you can add further snapshots, I'll call them. You can add on top of this existing frozen state. 
So once we begin, I'll freeze and then I'll add more layers in rapid succession. And of course, you can clear out the freeze state just by clicking on this clear button. But right there, you can create these immersive pads, these immersive soundscapes just by clicking on freeze and adding to that frozen state. This is a wonderful control to automate in your projects. And underneath that is the enhance button, which basically reduces the size of the space. It's fantastic for more percussive sounds. Take a listen again. And as if that wasn't enough, there's the Quantec Yardstick, which is an updated algorithm based on the same high quality approach, but adds further precise control over the reverb effect. There's reverb density, there's a mode from either simple all the way to complex. The ability to adjust not only the emphasis or de-emphasis of the lower high end, but also you can adjust the frequency at which this takes place. And there's extended controls beyond that. So if we take a quick listen again. The Quantex are a fantastic addition to Logic Pro's Reverb Collection, and you definitely need to check it out for your own tracks. And of course, both versions of the Quantex are available in Logic Pro for iPad 2.1. Now, the one exclusive feature to Logic Pro for iPad 2.1 is that you can finally save, navigate, and locate your own personal samples inside the Logic Pro browser. Of course, you could always slide over the Files app and navigate through a tree of folders, but now when you open the browser, you have the option to add your own sample folders when you tap, there's an option to choose a folder. And from there, you can choose the sample folder of your choice to be able to navigate through. And just like with every other sample loop and sound in the Logic Pro browser, you can swipe your finger to hear all the different sounds in your sample folders. And once you locate the sound you want to use, you can just drag it right in. But there's also the option to be able to collapse all your folders so you just see all of your samples, not broken up into folders, but just all laid out so you can quickly swipe through them. Of course, there's brand new lessons for getting acquainted with these new features in Logic Pro for iPad 2.1 just by going to the Lessons tab. Some other really great features in this latest set of updates is number one, the brand new option for choosing a destination when using bounce regions in place. There's a drop down menu that you can choose between either one single file for all the selected regions, one file per track, or one file per region. So the previous behavior was one file. So let me select a couple different regions from different tracks. And if I bring up bounce regions in place, the option would have been one file. So even though these three regions are on different tracks, if I click OK, I get one single file. And now let's bring up the region dialog. And this time, I'm going to choose one file per track. So now I have three separate tracks with three separate audio files. That's pretty awesome. But then also if you select several regions on the same track and want to bounce in place, you can also choose one file per region. So I have three separate bounces for each of these three regions, but since they all existed on the same track originally, they're all placed on a brand new track, but as separate files. Next up, if you customize the control bar in LCD, the option for sample rate now includes buffer size. So you can see at a glance the current buffer size of your project without having to dive into the audio settings each and every time. Next up, if we take a look at the stereo output, there's this button for the mastering assistant, right? And for some of us, that mastering assistant button sometimes is a little too close for comfort. And when you're trying to load a new plugin by clicking on the sliver, you may sometimes accidentally click the mastering assistant button. Well, in that case, if we get rid of this plugin, 
And if you go up to Logic Pro settings, down to view, and click on the mixer tab, you can actually hide the mastering assistant button in the stereo output. So boom. Now you can choose to load mastering assistant when you're ready to choose it. Beatbreaker now has a bypass below function, just like Chroma Glow. So if you want to omit something at the bottom of the spectrum, you can just click, hold, and drag to eliminate the processing to anything below a set frequency. So if we take a listen. On top of that is a brand new producer pack that was introduced with Logic Pro for iPad earlier this year, the Pom Pom Producer Pack. There's also a brand new modular melody sound pack, which was inspired by the popularity of the original modular rhythm sound pack. With the introduction of multi-tracking the voice memos app with the iPhone 16 Pro, you can now also share your projects directly to voice memos. So you can send a song to a collaborator, take the song out of the studio, but be able to record if you have the iPhone 16 Pro on the go. There's a new auto record setting. If you go to Logic Pro down to settings and recording, and there's an option here for MIDI recordings to either auto record enable just the selected track or all selected tracks for MIDI. So for example, if I select, you can see the R in the record enable buttons red, so it's ready to go. If I also select the Green Lights Drum Machine Designer track, the Record Enable button doesn't turn red. But if I switch this to All Selected Tracks, both MIDI tracks are now Record Enabled and ready to go. If you go to the View menu, there's now an option to have the creation date and the last modified date applied to the region titles. So you can see a date and a time has been applied right here in the region. And the last modified date can also be included. Plus, on top of all this, if you click on a send, there's an option to select all the other channels with the same destination. And just like that, I've selected the two tracks that are both being sent to Bus 2. There you have it, the brand new features of Logic Pro for Mac 11.1, Logic Pro for iPad 2.1. This is Apple's update to let the user base know, hey, we are listening. We do care about what you want to see in the app. And that's why a lot of these additions have taken place. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to WideLogicProRules.com here on the channel and on the website. And be sure to check out the description below where I always include links to PDFs, guides, and templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.